What's up, what's up, human beings on the intertubes? This is episode six of Studio Practice, your no bullshit look into those things that animate the artist and designer studio. I think it's only appropriate that we take a moment to reflect on the words of Senator Ted Stevens, who reminds us the internet is not a truck, it's a series of tubes. It's not a big truck, it's, it's a series of tubes. I'm in New York City at the Drawing Center on a project this week, so this is going to be a slightly different type of episode. In lieu of a regular episode and as a way of thanking my first 23 subscribers, I'm going to give away a limited edition print this week. Frame this, hang it over your desk, and when you're faced with an intractable problem, I suggest you do precisely what I do. Ask yourself this question, what would Elliot do? I've assigned a number to each one of my subscribers. Give me a random number between 1 and 23. It's 13. Luke Schumann, you just want a limited edition print. All right, look, let's get down to it. My suggestion for this week involves an alternative mode. Unfortunately, in our contemporary culture, the overwhelming majority of architects, communication, graphic, UX, UI, product, and industrial designers put food on the table through some form of highly specialized cube farm labor. Your studio may not look like this, but let's be real. This image represents knowledge work in its most platonic form. While many young sculptors and painters make a living as bartenders, baristas, and night watchmen. Am I arrogant enough to suggest that this is inherently a bad way to make a living? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. This is the Detroit-based designer, Chris Shank. Here we see one of Chris's stunning tables. I'm telling you, man, I would feel like Michael Jackson sitting at this thing, in a good way. This is motivational speaker, author, and minister, Dr. Eric Thomas, also from Detroit. And this is the book, Unlabeled, by Mark Echo. What do these three things have in common? The single most important character trait for an artist or designer to possess, in my opinion, is the capacity to take action. Chris Shank's work, Dr. Eric Thomas, and Mark Echo's book all speak to the necessity of action. Here we see my piece entitled, God. There simply is no future outside the cube farm without initiative. Dr. Eric Thomas powerfully suggests that when we fail to achieve our goals, it is primarily because we value sleep or sitting on the couch more than we value our novel, our studio, or our painting. Eric Thomas is a powerful messenger for the simple idea that if you want to be king, you gotta grind. I simply cannot count the number of times I've heard young designers and artists lament their lack of opportunity. And this is where Mark Echo hits the nail on the head. In Echo's personal narrative, he reminds us that the power is with the people. Contrary to what our culture teaches, you make the work first. As an artist, you're presented with opportunity after you've made the work, not before. Look, man, you want to get the f out of the cube farm? Take action. Take concrete steps towards making work each day. And follow the advice of Mark Echo by taking it directly to the people. And through the beauty and power of artistic practice, you will become like a god. Your life will become steeped in the act of creation. Let's recap. Point number one, take action to realize your artistic vision. Point two, when we fail to take action, it is most often because we value sleep and leisure more than our work. And finally, work precedes opportunity, not the other way around. It's mail time, but I did not receive any questions or comments this week. Don't be shy.